Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing great. So today I am here to discuss a high age topic that is celiac disease. So I have made three slides guys. In the first slide we will talk about celiac disease and how gluten damages the intestine. In the second slide I have talked about the clinical features and the risk factor. And the last slide the diagnosis and the treatment and also what is D-Zalose test and what is the importance of this test in celiac disease. So try to watch the entire video guys and if my videos are helping you then do like, share and subscribe. Okay, so let's jump to the topic celiac disease. That is a gluten sensitivity enteropathy mostly seen in the northern European descent and it is a disease of genes that is HLA class 2 and grains that is gluten. And patients with celiac disease, they have a variant of HLA gene that is HLA DQ2 and DQ8. You can see that DQ2 is most common and DQ8 is less common. These DQ2 and DQ8 variant, they bind to the gliadin and they present it to the CD4 T cells. So we'll discuss that in detail. Now, as you can see here that in the celiac disease, uh, that is the pathology is mainly in the small intestine. Let's understand the concept normally, then we will understand what happens in celiac disease. So normally the small intestine and villi, their job is to absorb nutrients and water and those they enter into the lamina propria and then into, they enter into the circulation. There are also few intraepithelial lymphocytes whose job is to fight with the infection. Okay, and you can see in the celiac disease, the villa is atrophied. There is an increased number of intraepithelial lymphocytes, and also there is a crypt hyperplasia. Now, where exactly a crypt is located? In between these uh, villi, there are indentation called crypts, and the job of the crypt is a stem cell. That means it will uh, replenish the dead epithelial cells. Okay, so now. Let's say that a patient with the celiac disease, he has, he eats uh, foods like um, um, bread or uh, cereals. So what will happen? They have gluten in them. So the gliadin is a protein. They enter the small intestine and in the lamina propria, they come in contact with the tissue transvitaminase and these gliadin they are recognized by the antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells and they have MSC class 2 or that is that encodes HLA DQ2 or DQ8 and the CD4 T cells which has the T cell receptors will recognize this gliadin and the CD4 T cells get activated and they release cytokines and these cytokines can damage the epithelial cells they can also increase the number of intraepithelial lymphocytes and those again will damage the epithelial cell. The CD4 T cell stimulates the B cells to produce antibodies. Okay, so you can see here how the B cells are stimulated to produce antibodies that is anti-tissue transglutaminase, anti-deaminated gliadin antibodies and anti-entomycial antibody. Now, GET is a good mnemonic to remember, guys. G is gliadin, E is endomycial, and T is transcutaminase. And also, uh, I have made a video on MSC class two, uh, class one, and class two, and I'm going to uh, mention the link in the description. If you haven't watched it, please watch it. Okay. So, I hope this uh, pathology has uh, made it simple. Okay. And uh, let's go to the next slide, guys. That is the clinical features. Now, symptoms of this uh, celiac disease are mainly due to reduced absorption of water and nutrient. Why? Because we saw that how the intestinal villa is damaged. So, if there is a reduced absorption of water, they will have diarrhea. If there is a reduced absorption of fat, they will have tetoria. If there is a reduced absorption of nutrients, they will have weight loss and impaired growth. If there is a reduced absorption of electrolytes like potassium and sodium, they will have fatigue. If there is a reduced absorption of iron, vitamin B9 or B12, they will have anemia. If there is a reduced absorption of vitamin 
uh, D and calcium that goes to process if there is a reduced absorption of vitamin K because we know that vitamin K prevents from bleeding so there will be increased risk of bleeding and why bloating because then the, there is a reduced absorption of nutrients what happens that when the nutrients are not observed the intestinal bacteria they are using of these nutrients and they release gas and they will cause a bloating okay now coming to the risk factors as we already saw that hla dq2 and dq8 are prone and mostly seen in older population and since it is auto it is an autoimmune disease so one autoimmune disease are prone for another autoimmune disease so um, people with the autoimmune disease like diabetes mellitus um, and multiple sclerosis Hashimoto's thyroiditis those people are prone for celiac disease okay family members having celiac disease that is another important thing now coming to the last slide guys uh, diagnosis uh, since we saw in the previous slide that the T cells stimulating the B cells to produce these antibodies, these anti tissue transglutaminase antibodies, they um, antibodies, I mean the antibodies against the tissue transglutaminase, they enter into the circulation. However, those antibodies are not 100% accurate to diagnose celiac disease. So we have to do certain confirmatory tests like upper GI endoscopy and biopsy. So, you can see here that the endoscopes go, go into the small intestine and we can take down the biopsy uh, and then we can examine under the microscope and the features what we get is villus atrophy, increased number of intraepithelial lymphocytes and crypt hyperplasia. All these are histological features of celiac disease and we can also do genetic testing uh, for HLA-DQ2 or DQA. Okay. So that's important. Now coming to the treatment, the main treatment for celiac disease is gluten-free diet because that is the main pathology causing it. So uh, food like wheat, barley, rye, are they are more with the gluten. Okay. So if a person is taking gluten-free diet, there will be recovery of the intestinal lining. As we saw that there was damage to the intestinal lining. So there will be recovery and all the symptoms will improve. But if, we, if the disease is left untreated, then the patient can have T cell lymphoma. Okay. So lastly, guys, we should know what exactly is disease allos test and why it is important in celiac disease. The disease allos test is abnormal in celiac disease. These are nothing but the sugars they are observed in the small intestine. So disease allos is given orally and its level is checked in the blood and urine. Now in celiac disease, there is a lower level of uh, lower level in is. Uh, they are why because low level of these allos why because the intestine is damaged so there is less absorption so lower level indicates the nutrient malabsorption like celiac disease and it is normal in pancreatic pathology i hope this video has helped you guys and if there is uh, any doubt let me know in the comment section and thank you so much for watching guys and you have a great day